In a typical DDC loop, the computer receives three inputs from the controller. The three computer inputs are process value, valve position feedback, and enable. The computer input is the 1 to 5 volt signal representing the process value. It is called the input signal. Another input is the 1 to 5 volt signal representing the controller output. And the third input is a contact that tells the computer whether or not the controller is in the digital mode. The computer produces four inputs to the controller. Two of the inputs are called gates. If the computer wishes to communicate with the controller, it must ground both gates one and two of that controller. Only one controller at a time can be gated for a specific time interval. Trace the gate one line from pin E of the controller to computer frame 02, strip B6, terminal 10. Trace gate two from controller terminal J to computer frame 02, strip B5, terminal 00. The computer output, called the DAC output, is a 2 to 10 volt signal for this particular Foxborough system. It is the third computer signal. DAC is an abbreviation for digital to analog converter. The DAC is physically a piece of computer hardware. The DAC line is common to all the controllers addressed by the computer. The DAC output to this controller goes from computer frame 07, location L, terminal 32, to terminal R of the controller. A DDC controller receives the DAC signal from the computer and converts the DAC voltage to a proportional output current. The DAC signal, or computer output, represents the valve position the computer has calculated as being optimum for maintaining the desired process value. The fact that the computer is directly controlling the control valve position is why we call the system DDC, or Direct Digital Control. This controller, when in digital mode, merely converts the 2 to 10 volt signal to a proportional 10 to 50 milliamp signal. Two things we have mentioned previously deserve to be mentioned again. First, the DAC output is common to all controllers in this particular system. Second, only the controller that has both gates operated is capable of reading the DAC output and converting the DAC signal into an output current. In this example, which controller will read the DAC output? Controller C, because both its gates are grounded in the computer. The DAC signal and gate operate signals last only a few milliseconds for each controller. For DDC control, the computer action is as follows. The computer applies the proper DAC output voltage for a specific controller. 
10 volts to controller A, for example. The computer then turns on both controller A gates. The controller reads the DAC line, sees 10 volts, and the controller produces 50 milliamps of output. The gates then turn off. The controller continues to produce 50 milliamps of output. The DAC signal doesn't affect the controller since the gates are off. The controller output will hold the last DAC signal it sensed until it is gated once again. Sometimes computers fail. Therefore, the controller must have a way of sensing a computer failure so it can fail to manual or automatic control. A computer fail relay, operated by computer hardware, tells the controller whether or not the computer is online or operational. If the computer fails, the computer fail relay contact opens. The current path between pins S and U is interrupted. and the controller fails or falls back to manual or analog control. A light informs the operator that the controller is in digital, but the computer is unavailable. The controller can be internally wired to fail to either manual or automatic control upon computer failure. The computer fail signal is the fourth signal the computer sends to the controller. A signal common bus electrically connects the various loop components, such as credenza, computer, and controller, so signal common is at the same potential at all the locations. An external 24 VDC circuit is also used for this controller. The 24 volts powers the alarm light. Anytime the controller is in manual, or analog, or any time the controller is in digital and the computer fails, the light will come on. Now work exercise number five in your workbook. This is instrument loop F 480. It is a flow control loop. This loop uses a Veritrack controller a Veritrack transmitter and a Fisher 546 transducer. Here is the loop diagram for F480. It is a DDC loop with automatic analog backup control. Make a mental list of the major control center items shown. The major control center loop items are terminal cubicles K1 and P1, panel board 25, recorder credenza Y, and the computer.
This is an instrument panel and terminal cabinet location plan. Locate terminal cabinet cubicle K1. This is K1 in the control center. Locate terminal cabinet cubicle P1. Here is the cubicle. You also need to locate panel board 25. Panel board 25 is located here. Find recorder credenza Y on the drawing. This is the credenza. Locate the computer on the drawing. Here is the computer. Notice that this loop also contains a low flow alarm. This is the back of the Veritrack controller. These numbers correspond to the loop diagram controller terminal numbers. The controller receives 24 volts DC on terminals 29 and 27 of the controller. Locate terminals 29 and 27 on the loop diagram. Controller terminal E is powered with 24 volts DC through fuse number 3. Notice terminal E. Here is F3 and terminal E on the controller terminal board. The controller terminal boards are located on the backs of the controllers. Each board serves two controllers. Now work exercise number six in your workbook.